In the previous video, we learned about function composition, how we can compose together two functions given algebraically by putting one function inside of the other. Uh, the examples we saw in the previous video mostly focused on polynomials, and therefore there were really no domain issues whatsoever. And so I do want to look at some examples of functions for which, because the domain is restricted, this will have a consequence on the domain of the composite function. So let's take two functions. We're going to take f of x to equal the square root of x and g of x to equal the square root of 2 minus x. So as a quick aside, let's think about the domain of these things. If we want to think about the domain of f for a moment, right, because f of x is a square root function, what we have going on here is we have to make sure that the radicand, the number inside of the, of the radical, is itself non-negative. So we need that x is greater than or equal to 0. And as there's no more to do there, that's, that's what we end up with. The domain of f is going to be all numbers 0 to infinity. 0 included, right? The square root of 0 is a number. It's 0. It's, it's a real number there. Uh, we can do a similar thing for g. The domain of g, well, with g of x given as the square root of 2 minus x, we have to take the radicand, which is, in this case, 2 minus x, right? We have to take the radicand and set it have to set it greater than or equal to zero, uh, in which case you can you can subtract two from both sides. You get negative x is greater than or equal to negative two. Then divide both sides by negative one. You're going to get x is less than or equal to two. Notice here that since I divided by negative one, your inequality symbol switches directions when you multiply or divide by a negative. So the domain of g will be all numbers less than or equal to two. So this gives us negative infinity to negative or to positive two is the domain of g. There is an important difference there. Now let's go look at f composed with g. If we just want to know the formulas, what this means is f composed with g means you put g inside of f. Now in this example here, f, or sorry, g is given by the form of the square root of 2 minus x. So we can just replace g of x with its formula. And then we're going to substitute the square root of 2 minus x inside the formula for f here. Everywhere you see an x, we'll replace it with the square root of 2 minus x. This gives us the square root of the square root of 2 minus x here. Now, when you start composing radicals with each other, much like exponents, um, we're going to multiply their degrees together. And we don't usually write it for square roots, but like if we had a cube root or fourth root, we would mention it here. And so if you have a square root of square root, when you multiply that together 2 by 2, uh, you're going to get the fourth root of 2 minus x right here. And so this gives us the formula for our composite function the fourth root of 2 minus x. What consequence does this have on the domain, right? Well, some things we can see very clearly here is that the inside radicand is 2 minus x. That has to be a non-negative number because, again, we still have an even degree radical here. If 2 minus x was negative, we would be getting an imaginary number. And so this is going to tell us that x needs to be less than 2. That might seem a little bit familiar, right? That's the domain of g. And we've seen this before, right? With the inside function, in order for this function to be defined, g of x needs to be defined. So this function, f composed with g, will inherit the restrictions of g. So we see that negative infinity to 2 is part of the domain. Uh, but any, any other restrictions going on here? Uh, what we've seen before is that the things going into, the things coming out of g have to fit inside of f here. But what comes out of g? When it This kind of comes down to looking at the range of this function, the square root of 2 minus x. Turns out the square root only produces non-negative numbers. Uh, the square root can only be, only be positive or it could be 0. And that's exactly the domain of f. So the numbers coming out of g are exactly the numbers allowed to go inside of f. So it turns out the restrictions of f don't seem to come into play here because... They, the, the, the restrictions of f are compatible with the range of g here. So we see very quickly that the domain of f composed with g is equal to negative infinity to 2, which is just the domain of g. That's not always the case. We're going to see something very different in the next example. Um, if we take a look at g of f of x, we put f inside of g. And so this time, I'm going to evaluate the outside function first. g, we're going to take the square root of 2 minus x, but instead of x, we're going to put f of x. And f of x is the square root of x. So we're going to get the square root of 2 minus the square root of x. Um, we do have a nested square root this time, but unlike the last example, we can't compound those together to make it a fourth root. 
And so identifying the domain is gonna be a little bit trickier here this time. The first thing to consider is the inside square root, the square root of x. Uh, in order for this to work, we have to have that x is gonna be greater than or equal to zero. This is just the domain of f, which again, f is the inside function. Everything entering the composite must first fit in through f. But the next thing to consider is that we take the radicand of the second square root, two minus the square root of x right here. What makes that thing non-negative? And as we investigate that, that inequality, I should say, two minus the square root of x here, this is greater equal to zero, we're going to subtract two from both sides. So we get negative square root of x is greater than or equal to negative two. We're gonna times both sides by negative one. We'll get the square root of x is less than or equal to two, which is the inequality around. And then we're gonna square both sides. Squaring is an increasing function when x is uh, here. Yeah, squaring is gonna be an increasing function in this case. So we're gonna get x is greater than or equal to four. And so when we put these things together, x is less than or equal to four, uh, but x has to be greater than or equal to zero. When you put this together, you get the domain of g composed with f is gonna equal the interval zero to four. So we only get this finite interval, zero to four, are the acceptable values for this expression right here. Where do these things come from? The zero came about because zero, or the, it has to be bigger than zero to fit inside of f or equal to zero. But where did the four come out? Well, the thing is, in order for g of x to be defined, your number can't be bigger than two. So we then calculate what numbers can fit inside of f to guarantee that number is not bigger than two. Well, the biggest x can be is four, because when we take four, four square root is two, and that was the threshold that g allowed. And so we were able to see exactly what happens here. The numbers coming out of f need to fit inside of g. And if we get bigger than four, that's no longer a possibility. Uh, just for more example here, let's try g composed with g of x here uh, to kind of see the same principle again, g of g of x. So we're gonna take the square root of two minus g of x, which itself is two, we get square root of two minus the square root of two minus x, like so. So when we look at the, the innermost square root, we can predict what's gonna happen there. We see that x is gonna have to be less than two. That comes from solving two minus x is greater than or equal to zero. That's the domain of g. We've seen that one already, right? Now the thing to check out here is how does this part how do we make sure that this is non-negative? Well, setting up the inequality, you get two minus the square root of two minus x, which needs to be greater than or equal to zero. Uh, subtract two from both sides. You get the following, times both sides by negative one, you'll get the square root of two minus x is less than or equal to two. Do make sure you flip the inequality there. Square both sides, you'll get two minus x is greater than or equal to four. Subtract two, we get negative x is less than or equal to two, and then times by negative uh, one here, we get x is gonna be greater than or equal to negative two. And so when we put these things together, we see the domain of g composed with g is equal to negative two to two. So the things that fit inside of g have to be less than two, but the things coming out of g in order to make sure that those are still less than two themselves must be greater than negative two. And this shows you how we can find the domain of a composite of two functions, how it'll, inherit restrictions from its parents. The inner parent, it'll be, it'll be straightforward. It has the exact same domain, but the outer parent's a little bit more complicated, but by solving, in this case, inequalities, we're able to find out what are those limits we get from uh, the outer function of the composition.